Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well. We start speaking about the press conference, Frosinone, Juve, what did he say? Our dear coach, our dear Max Allegri, how did he prepare the game? Who will play, who will not play? Well, we'll go through all these things, and especially going to the squad list, that is revealing us a lot of things. Federico Chiesa is not there, Huysen is not there, we have four goalkeepers, Wea has been shifted by midfield to forward, we need to discuss. He said things about Dusan Vlaovic. We'll go through all these kind of things. No, I will not speak about the Super League. If you want to know more about the Super League or you have the long format live that we did yesterday when we were a bit explaining what was the format. Otherwise, on the new channel, Football, I went with a 20-minute video where really I went towards my opinion. And I didn't take a side of take Super League or take UEFA, but I wanted to go towards the hypocrisy that I read online and I was really pissed off about some things that according to me are absolutely not acceptable. The people that already watched it and liked it, they said, Beppe, it's a really great video. So don't miss it. Football channel, we are nearly thousand there. So continue also here, of course, maximum of like. And don't forget to subscribe. We already reached 28 and we are going towards 30,000. And I have a surprise. If you stay until the end of the video, we'll speak about Zirikse with Gazeta dello Sport that this morning really made me laugh. Because, of course, there are rumors linking Zirikse to Juve, but there was something particularly that really made me laugh. So let's start the squad list. When you are opening it, and I will probably not edit the video, so go back on the Juve social network but you will see that we have four goalkeepers usually we call up three of them Chesney, Pinsolio, Perin this time you have Crespi as well it's the second time that he has been called up he didn't start it yet as a first goalkeeper with the first team but he's there four goalkeepers though the question I have at the moment is why is it because it's a kind of Christmas gift. It's a reward because he's training well, because he's doing fantastically well, and they want to let him feel a bit that atmosphere of playing, or at least playing, warming up with the first team. Could be, yeah? could be, I don't know. Or is it because Chesney, Perrin, or Pinsolio, one of the three goalkeepers, are not at 100%? At the moment, there are no news about that. He didn't even mention it in press conference. But of course, it's a question mark I have. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. If it's a Christmas gift, good. It's nice to take these players to let them feel a bit the atmosphere. Is if, if it's a problem for a goalkeeper, well, it's annoying, of course. The second thing that you're looking when you're looking at the defenders, because I always go with goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, and forward, we are missing Huysen. I have to speak about that a bit later because, of course, we are playing tomorrow against Frosinone. As far as I know, he's not injured, so... Eh. It start to be really crystal clear. And we'll speak about that in a second. And then you see that in the midfield, you don't have Wea anymore because he has been shifted from midfield to the strikers. But you know what is even more a bomba? Federico Chiesa is not there. So we start with a press conference. Did he speak about Chiesa? Did he explain? Yes, he did. The first question was about Dusan Vlaovic. And did and will he play tomorrow as a starter? Max said, I don't know yet. I didn't decide yet. Also because we have only three strikers at disposal. Bomba. Silence in the room there. Everyone was asking who is missing. He said, tomorrow we have Dusan Vlaovic, we have Milik, and we have Yildiz. Three players. Federico Chiesa, he is out for the game of tomorrow. Why? Because he felt discomfort in his patellar, patellar tendon. If you're asking me, Beppe, what it is, I have no idea. I'm not a doctor. Ragazzi, I didn't take the time to inform myself. Eh, one day I will become a doctor and I will explain you. Now I don't know. Anyway, it's annoying because it's the tendon that I know where it is. And it's something that, you know, the last away game of the season where we just come from a draw against Genoa, where he just scored, yes, on penalty. But we needed Federico Chiesa there. We were all asking ourselves, Federico Chiesa with who? Will he play in a three-man offensive line with Kenanilis finally? Will he play with Milik? Will Vlaovic be benched? Now we know one thing. It will not be Moiskin. It will not be be Federico Chiesa. So probably the chances to see Milik starting next to Vlaovic in a 3-5-2 are increasing, or at least this is what we hear. Because he spoke about Dusan, he said, I don't know if he will start, we have three strikers at disposal, Vlaovic is 23, and playing at Juve is never easy. He continues saying, but recently he did some good games, especially technically, where I was really happy. He's only missing the goal, but he needs to grow. In managing the top and the flop moments. The top moment, the good moments, but also the bad moments in a single game. Because you never know. 
Sometimes you miss an attempt and 15 seconds later you have the opportunity with another chance. And if you are not remaining in that game at that moment, it's over. And that's something that he needs to grow in. He's continuing to say, but it's in a way normal because when you are a young player, when you are 23, you still need to grow as a player and you reach usually as a player full maturity towards 26, 27 years. And it's not a mystery that last year when Rabio was 27, that's where he reached his peak of maturity. Anyway, he's using actually the two sides of a medal. The good words, he's doing well, he's only missing the goal, he played really well technically, etc., etc., towards uh, Dusan Vlavic, saying, no, I give you the beautiful words. On the other side, he's saying, oh, but you still have to improve. You see, the two sides, which is always good, eh? good and bad, mixing them. But of course, then he's going towards uh, Milik. Milik, when he plays, he has always been decisive. Offensively, scoring some goals, but not only also when he's helping and supporting the team. So he's a player that is not playing a lot at the moment, but when he's playing, he's doing well. I believe, hearing the words, that tomorrow they play together, Dusan and Milik. Is it the best possible duo? I don't know. What about Yildiz? He didn't even mention the name Yildiz once, except when he said, we have three strikers. Will it be the big chance of Yildiz? Could be, yeah. Could be. Because tomorrow we play against a team that is enjoying the youth. Not only our youth, but also Ibrahimovic, uh, the other one, the Argentinian one. They have a lot of young players that they are launching. So, you know, it could be an ideal scenario to see our kid also doing well. Can I yield this? First start against Frosinone. Will he receive that responsibility after the draw of Genoa? I don't know. But Max didn't speak a lot about it. I would say play him. I don't know if from the start or in the second second period at the 60th minute, I don't know, but let him play. And I think that tomorrow we will see the this. Anyway, he continues, eh? speaking about Rabiot, tomorrow he's there, tomorrow he plays, so luckily he's feeling much better. What about Wea? He's growing in his minutes, he still doesn't have the 90 minutes in his leg, but he's there, and we know it. So the only one that are missing, only one, is Moiskin, Federico Chiesa, De Cilio. Pogba, Fajoli, we know these ones. Okay, so that's an annoying part for the for the 352 without Chiesa. That is a big bomba because tomorrow we have to go, we have to win. Actually, one of the important things that he said is whoever is playing tomorrow, the result is too much important. It's too much of an importance. He's repeating it. It's super important to result tomorrow. We have to go and we have to win. Against a tricky Frosinone. He didn't say a difficult game. He said a tricky Frosinone. And he repeats what he said, what I said on the channel a few days ago. Frosinone, they lost only one game at home this season against Napoli. A Napoli that yesterday, they were two days ago, they were able to beat 4-0 in Coppa Italia. So pay attention because Frosinone is doing extremely well. And when he received the question about the Frosy boys, about Sule. Caio Giorgio, Barrenece, he said, I'm absolutely not surprised. They are really doing well. Not surprised for them, for their skills, but also for the club that they are at because they have a fantastic sporting director. They have a good coach that is using them and is doing fantastically well. So I'm absolutely not surprised. Then he continues speaking about um, Heisen. No, it's not true. He didn't speak about Heisen. I want to speak about Heisen. He didn't mention him yesterday, but he's not there. And of course, when you are reading the papers, when you see the tweets of Romeo Agresti that said in the next coming days, they will close the deal, Heisen on loan to Frosinone. So I think that psychologically, he will not go there to travel, to play against what will be his future team. Also because we have all the defenders at disposal, probably will gain some minutes with the next gen before, and the last game with the next gen before going six months on loan. <laughs> Am I happy? In a way, no, because of course I want to keep my kid. I wanted to see him starting, but it's true that, especially with the growth of Rugani, with the Shiloh that will come back, with Alexandra that is there until the end of the season because they are not speaking about renewal, I understand that it's better for him to go in a team where he is sure that if he deserves, of course, that he will play some minutes. Is it a pity? Yeah, yeah. On the other side, I'm super happy to see him developing, see him growing, and uh, let's see how he will come back because it's a player that I can tell you, Juventus is really counting on also for next year with much more experience in the first division. And they made a decision. They said, playing in third division with Serra Chi, we could use him, eh? of course. 
but it's limiting for him. He's already there. He's already there to play in Serie A a second part. And that's actually, in a way, really, really good. A good one. It, but anyway, not playing tomorrow, it's, a, it's another thing. What did he said else than that? Well, the question of the journalist, would you sign tomorrow, finishing second in the league? That means qualification to the Champions League, the objective that he always said minimal, but winning the Coppa Italia because Inter is out, Napoli is out, and he said no. There are, the games must be played, games must be win, but it shows, of course, Napoli, Inter, that they are out, that every single game this season is extremely difficult. It's not easy to win, so pay attention. He didn't mention Sarnitana, but it will be the same, especially now that these teams are out. Napoli, Na uh, Inter, against who? Bologna, Frosinone, well, Sarnitana, they will say, you know what, we have our chance. Why not trying? Why not trying? Um, so that's a bit the press conference. What about Sule that tomorrow will be there and will play against us? Pay attention because the price of Sule is increasing. Some rumors are speaking about 30, some 35, some even 40. Will he be sold? Will he come back? Coming back now in January? Forget about it. That's something that I already can tell you. Then, will he finish the season with Frosinone and coming back to Juve? That's what I hope. That's what I wish. Because you know it, I have always been a fan. On the other side, it's a player that could bring you a lot of money. Will he be sold in January immediately? Will he stay there and then being sold because the price can increase? This is what Tuto Sport is telling us. Pay attention. Premier League is really attracted by the Argentinian young 20 years old boy. On the other side, Juventus, they don't want to sell him immediately because they want that he continue to play and to prove. Because at the end of the, uh, the, the season, these 30, 35 million euro could even potentially bring him 40, 45 million euro, which is absolutely not neglectable. And we start feeling that if they had to make the choice, well, the choice has been made to keep a Canadian this, not loaning him out, not selling him, but keeping him until the end of the season. I believe I said a lot of things. Then, as I told you, I wanted to speak about Zirigze. La Juve. Zirigze, El Grande Intrigo. It's the one that is intriguing Juventus the most, Zirigze. He has uh, a clause of 40 million euro. Bologna, they paid him 8.5 million euro to Bayern Munich. And Bayern Munich has 50% on the profit sale. So you have to decide how much they will sell him. And on the profit, so you have to deduct this 8.5 million euro that Bologna paid, they have 50% that they will cash in. So, of course, Bologna, they will not negotiate on at least this 40 million euro close. Is he a player that I would see and love to see at Juve? He's a good player. He's a talented player. He's 22. Had a bit of difficulties the last two years. He disappeared a bit of the radar and he's back thanks to Bologna, thanks to the work of Sartori, that is a fantastic sporting director, thanks to Tiago Motta, thanks to himself. He's on fire. If you watch that Coppa Italia game against Napoli, mamma mia, what a player. He has a lot of skills. He has a lot of potential. Then they are telling, eh, if Vlaovic leaves, you go for Zirice. Or Juve could go for Zirice because they would have the money. Calma. Tranquil. We can't just take a player, it's not working, we go with the next phenomenon that is playing five games well, because Zirik said it's true, he's playing well since the beginning of the season, but the last four or five games is really a poster man. We have to be calm. Calm, understanding, on a medium term, more than just we analyze the last four games, he's fantastic, and we catch it. Because that's what we did with, well, that's what we did with Vlaovic. We were rushed, we were scared that he would have gone to Arsenal or to another club, and we have put probably too much money for the player. 80 million euros, which is out of proportion. Calma. But what made me love is probably Gazette del Sport. And watch it, I put it in the Telegram group, the picture where you see a kind of a, a, the a Corpo Sana in Mensana, you know, the, the Nostradamus uh, uh, picture that is uh, actually showing Zirik say there with uh, the technique of Van Basten, Gazette del Sport, eh? the technique of Van Basten, the right foot of Ronaldinho, the left foot of Mohamed Salah, the assists of uh, Bergkamp, the backheel pass of Ibrahimovic, the sacrifice spirit of Eto, and even the hair of Gullit, Ruth Gullit. Guys, 
guys, this is the problem. This is what made me laugh this morning. I love the player. It's a good player. Do I want him at Juve? Why not? Even if I say Calma. But then I see that a players, after five games that they are doing well, boom, they are putting them, comparing them, not, not even comparing, going with his Eto, Ibrahimovic, Van Bast. They are, not, they are exaggerating. This is too much. This is too much. And then you know it. Uh, in three games, they will not score anymore. They will not do assists anymore. Bologna, hopefully not for them. But they will start losing game. And then it's over with Zirze. You see? So, calma. Let's not exaggerate because I think it's a bit too much. Anyway, this was it for the video. No edits, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, by the way, Lazio was winning 1-0 as we were, as, as I'm speaking. Sassuolo was winning 1-0. Tonight there is Milan that I'm encouraged to see against Sarnitana that will be our double opponent on the 14th Coppa Italia and on the 7th of January in Serie A. The last game of the first round that is important to then make the first sum up, the first calculation. Yes or no, is Juventus doing better than last year? Put it to a maximum of like, don't forget to subscribe, grazie forza, Juve, ciao!